Hello everybody and welcome to That Matt 85. This is a that documentary. This documentary is about the time when Yahoo found out that they were hacked and possibly had given away hundreds of millions of users information. This story broke starting in 2016 which wasn't too long ago. You might remember hearing on the news that Yahoo announced that it had been hacked. This was big worldwide news at the time and was covered extensively on TV and radio as well as print. As reported by Chappelle 2016, in September of 2016, Yahoo announced that information associated with at least 500 million user accounts was stolen. This announcement was made not long after Verizon announced plans to buy Yahoo. Yahoo says its investigation suggests the stolen data does not include payment and bank information because it was stored on a different system. It was suggested that the hack came from a state-sponsored actor and that the hack happened in late 2014. Yes, almost two years before the announcement that it had been hacked. The information stolen was likely usernames, email addresses, phone numbers, and dates of birth. It could also possibly include security question answers. Just three months later, Yahoo announced that there was another separate hack that exposed the same kind of information earlier. This second report was of a hack that happened in August of 2013 and affected 1 billion accounts. This second hack was also believed to be from a state-sponsored actor. Reports later say that up to 3 billion accounts have been affected in these hacks. Let me reiterate. The second hack that they discovered happened before the first hack. These were separate hacks. These hacks have led to some arrests, trials, and charges against foreign governments. This interestingly came out in the open when Verizon wanted to buy Yahoo and led to changes in their deal. This also led to many changes in security for Yahoo as a company and for its users. The investigation is still ongoing even though the hack happened years ago and the shock is wearing off. So what went wrong? Who did it? According to an article by D. Lawrence of Bloomberg, the Russian government is responsible for the hacking of Yahoo. The Federal Security Service, the FSB, recruited Russian hacker Alexei Balin and Kazakhstani hacker Karim Baratov, who were living in Canada. In charge of the hacking efforts of these two hackers was Dmitry Dokuchev and Igor Sushchin, who are both FSB officials. The U.S. indicted all of these people for the hacking of Yahoo, and it is the first time the U.S. has indicted anyone from the FSB for cybercrimes. Alexei Balan is from Latvia, but holds a Russian passport. In June of 2013, U.S. law enforcement had indicted him in Nevada and California for computer intrusions at three U.S. e-commerce companies and had him arrested in Europe. The FSB provided Balan with information that helped him avoid detection by law enforcement and helped him escape to Russia. He then gained access to Yahoo Networks and gave the access to the FSB. Alexei Balan is still at large in Russia. Karim Baratov is a 22-year-old Kazakhstan-born Canadian citizen who was a hacker for hire with Russia ties. Allegedly, Baratov worked with Dokuchev and Sushchin to hack 80 Yahoo accounts to gain access to other service provider accounts and gain information on up to 500 million other Yahoo accounts. According to Moog of CNN, Baratov who normally was a quiet and nice kid, had been suspended from high school for threatening to kill one of his friends as a joke. During the suspension, he used his extra time to promote his business, which at one of his domains advertised hacking on demand and made lots of money. He had several pictures on his Facebook and Twitter of him flaunting his wealth, showing luxury cars he had bought and his house that he paid off while still in high school. Baratov was arrested and extradited and pled not guilty August 23rd in a San Francisco courtroom. Baratov's lawyer says their client had no idea who he was dealing with or exactly what it was he was doing. Baratov remains in custody without bail for fear that he will flee the country. What went wrong? How did Yahoo get hacked? According to NPR, 
The hack of Yahoo was a slow and methodical hack. They methodically made their way deeper into Yahoo's network over the space of months, maybe years. It's not clear how the hackers first got access to Yahoo's network, but it happened around November 2014. Details may be kept secret so that the same techniques aren't used for more hacking attempts. Once inside, the hackers gained access to Yahoo's user database and internal tool used to access and edit information in their database. This user database included phone numbers, answers to security questions, and recovery email addresses. This database also included cryptographically scrambled versions of users' passwords that Yahoo uses to verify users as they log in. The hackers were able to use the crypto passwords to make a cookie that told Yahoo they were already logged in. This means that the hackers had access to accounts without having to know the actual passwords. Searching the database that they had access to and downloaded, they looked for emails that were linked to specific companies and organizations. Companies can get email addresses that use their domain but are still run through Yahoo Mail. Searching for email addresses that end in ap.org would narrow down their list of email addresses of the Associated Press. With this information that they had access to, they then were able to see what other email addresses were linked to the same account. If someone's recovery email address was sent to a Gmail account, they knew they had the same owner. This way they could send very personalized phishing emails that were used to gain even more information. They also used the information to redirect internet traffic to specific websites that would pay the hackers for the extra traffic. Specific data on Russian and US government officials were sent to the FSB. The database of account information was offered for sale on the dark web. This was bought by a few spammers and is how the hack was suspected. Why did it occur? The Russian FSB, by many accounts, were looking for specific information on specific people. Mainly they wanted information on US and Russian government officials. The reasons for this would obviously be because they wanted to spy on Americans to get information on what they are doing but also they wanted to spy on their own government to make sure there were no traitors, or to get blackmailing information. To do this, the FSB went through outside hackers either because they could not do it themselves, or because they wanted to try to not have it linked back to their own organization. When a country is launching a cyber attack on another country, it's basically an act of war. But if some random citizen of their or another country does it, they can deny it was state-sponsored. To get information on these specific people, the hackers got inside of Yahoo database. This would be more efficient than trying to hack each of 80 or so accounts. They could hack one target, Yahoo, and have access to all 80 accounts. Once they had access to these accounts, they had some of the information they needed, but they also used this information to get more access. If a user of Gmail sets Yahoo as their backup email address, then if they want to change their password, a verification will be sent to Yahoo. Well, hackers could ask Gmail to change the password for a target. They can hack into the Yahoo account for the user and go through the verification steps to change the Gmail account password. If Gmail uses another form of verification like security questions, the hacker could look at the answers to the Yahoo's account's security questions and see if they're the same questions. Also, the hacker could use information from the Yahoo accounts to form very convincing phishing attempts to get more information they need. Some of the information that the hackers got from Yahoo include the addresses of family members, which could also be phished for the same information. If the target had a child, they could be phished because they might know the answer but not understand the dangers of phishing. Who was responsible? Responsibility for this breach can be assigned to several parties, starting with Yahoo. Yahoo has a responsibility to keep its private data secure and simply it did not happen. What is worse is that Yahoo possibly didn't know they were hacked until years after it happened, multiple times. Once a company is hacked, it is their responsibility to recover as best as it can from the incident. If users' passwords were leaked, then they are no longer safe and need to be changed. So Yahoo needs to alert their users to change their passwords. This leak of data also ends up making other sites vulnerable. Even though Google was not hacked, their Gmail is less than safe because of the recovery emails could have been sent to the hacked Yahoo accounts. Or similar security questions could be used on other accounts by the same user. The Russian FSB is of course responsible too. This government organization wanted the hack to occur and paid for it to happen. 
even though they may not have specifically wanted Yahoo accounts and they may have used outside freelance hackers to accomplish the task, they are the ones that set the whole event into motion. These hacks were not in response to another event and they were not in a defensive measure either. They were aggressive hacks with the purpose of intelligence gathering and spying on government officials. According to D. Volts of Reuters, the charges the U.S. is making against the FSB came with the charges of attempts to hack, to hack the 2016 U.S. elections. Russia spying on their own government officials is one problem that Russia will have to deal with itself, but against government officials of another country can be considered cyber warfare. This is a serious incident between countries. Last, some of the responsibility needs to fall on the hackers themselves. Alexei Balin is currently on the FBI Most Wanted list. According to Fox Brewster of Forbes, Balan was hiding out in Greece when law enforcement almost tracked him down. After that, he wound up in Russia, presumably with help from Russia. In the mid-2000s, Balan was a teenager and gaining a reputation across the internet for hacking several Russian websites. He kept a blog on his own personal website that would show evidence of his exploits. As he expanded his hacks, he had success at specifically hacking WordPress websites. Balan may have owed Russia for helping him evade arrest, but that is not an excuse for the hacking he is doing. He is probably under control of Russia because of his abilities. Russia wants to use him, and if he were to refuse, he could be given up to other countries to be put on trial for his former and current crimes. He is pretty much stuck doing the FSB's bidding. Karim Baratov is the other hacker and has been profiled earlier. He has been arrested and extradited to the U.S. to face charges. He is being held without bail for fear that he will flee to Russia. He has claimed that he did not know who he was hacking for. This is still not an excuse though. Whoever he was hacking for, he was still hacking Yahoo servers and selling private information to make money. How could it have been prevented? While arguably no cloud system is 100% hack proof, there is a reason that hackers got into Yahoo servers. These hackers were not specifically trying to get Yahoo information, but Yahoo was easier to hack than Google was. As explained earlier, hackers were able to forge cookies that Yahoo's email website accepted. Even though hackers may not have been able to see the encrypted passwords, that is all they needed to make the cookies that gave them access. The website should not be able to accept forged cookies, and that problem has been fixed. One way to prevent this could be having a different encoding of the password on the cookie than used to store the password in the database or having an encoded ID for each user to verify the cookie. Another security measure that could be put in place is separate systems. If there is one central depository of information on the cloud, that means the hackers just have to hack into one system and have all the information. If the databases are separated, if systems are divided up, that means the hacker has to hack into many different systems to have all the information. To help with this, there may need to be different sign-in and passwords for different levels of the system. There might be a sign-in to get into the server, then a different sign-in to access the database, or a different sign-in to access part of the server that works with email. This might be a hamper to legit employees that need access, but security processes often cause slowdowns in any environment, and security is a higher priority in this case than speed or ease of use. A major problem besides that the information got hacked is that it went undetected. It may have been detected and not reported, but that is unclear, so the assumption is that it was undetected. It is true that if someone logs into a server or database and looks at or copies the information without making changes, it can be hard to detect. The easiest thing to detect would be if the information is missing or added. Someone who is familiar with the information would notice the change. However, it is common practice to set up logs. These logs can be set up to track who logs into the server or database and can log the username and password used, IP address of the access, or even the time of day it was accessed. With these logs, a program can be set up to notice if there is something unusual, such as a new IP address or a suspicious time of access. Google has a feature like this that can either set off an alert or lock out access until the user can be verified. Even if a program like this is not set up though, Auditing the logs can tell the auditor that there has been suspicious activity. For example, if an auditor notices a suspicious IP address, they can find out what user this came from and call them to verify that it happened. Most likely, this is how the hacks were discovered. When Verizon was going to buy out Yahoo, 
They did an audit that discovered that the data had been leaked. This means that Yahoo wasn't doing audits themselves, or at least not good enough to catch that the data had been leaked. Verizon did not end up buying Yahoo, and the reputation for the website had plummeted since then. Updates have been made to make Yahoo a lot more safer, but it's hard to recover from this kind of fallout. In many companies, even technology companies, the actual technology is put on the back burner. Things such as security is not something that you sell to the public, and that makes it an expense that doesn't show immediate profit. Security, like other technology fields, is something that evolves quickly, and if you don't keep up with it, you are leaving yourself out of date. Thank you for listening to this first That Documentary. And if you liked it, please leave a like, and consider subscribing so that you can see when my new videos come out. Thank you.